Namaste. Greetings from Ukraine, from Chernity, and from the Department of Medical Biology of Genetics, Bukovinian State Medical University. Our department trains masters in specialties medicine, dentistry, physical, medical psychology, pharmacy, industrial pharmacy, and a lot of other specialists. First of all, let me introduce myself. Miranam Vladislav Yusupenko He. I am the assistant of the Department of Medical Biology and Genetics, and today I will give you a short lecture on topic cell basis of life. So we have uh, two main types of the cells. We have the prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. So what's the main differences between them? Prokaryotic cell has no nucleus, whereas the eukaryotic cell have nuclei which surround by a nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane. And the genetic material is our DNA will be inside of the cell. Whereas the uh, prokaryotic cell also possess the genetic, uh, genetic material, materials, it's a circular DNA, but this circular DNA will be located in a cytoplasm in a special zone which called nucleoid. Example of prokaryotic cell uh, are bacteria, for example, an example of eukaryotic cell are fungi, animal and plant cell. So we have the three main components of each eukaryotic cell. First of all, it's a cell membrane which surround our cell. Also, we have the all inner space which called cytoplasm, which contains a lot of organelles, different type of organelles. We will discuss about these organelles later. And the main apparatus of the cell is the nucleus. So, uh, we use a variety of teaching methods to make your learning uh, easier and more fun. One, one or such method is to use uh, interactive pictures during our classes. This allows us to consolidate the passive material in a game form and make simple its understanding for better results. Today, I want to share these interactive pictures with you so um, to make it easier for you to study biology. So look uh, for the QR code on the slides, scan it with your phones and uh, use it. First of all, I would like to speak about the cell membrane. So what cell membrane consists of? Cell membrane consists of two layers of phospholipids, which are stabilized by a specific proteins. We have different types of protein. For example, we have a transmembrane or integral protein, which pass through all membrane. And we have peripheral protein, which located at the one pole of cell membrane. Also, we have a molecules of cholesterol in our uh, cell membrane for stabilize our cell membrane. So what the function uh, of our uh, cell membrane? The function are protection and isolation of the cytoplasm from the exterior environment. Also, it's a regulation of molecular passage and recording a cellular adjustment. And here in the bottom corner of the slide, you may see a QR code to, uh, for uh, interactive pictures. Now about the cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is an all inner semi-fluid content of the cell except the nucleus. So our cytoplasm divide in two main parts. We have a cytoplasmic matrix. It's our liquid part of cytoplasm, which contains 90% um, of water and other component. And also we have the organelles. So I pay your attention that according to the structure of our organelles, we have the membranous and non-membranous organelles. So non-membranous organelles are ribosome, centrosome, cytoskeleton, but membranous organelles we divide in two main parts. We have a single membranous organelles and double membranous organelles. Double membranous organelles are mitochondria and plastids. And single membrane organelles are endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, peroxisomes, and vacuole. 
First of all, let's start with a double membrane organelles and let's start from mitochondria. So mitochondria is a uh, powerhouse of the cell. So the main function of mitochondria is the ATP synthesis. So it occurs as a result of oxid uh, oxidation of organic substances. And I pay your attention on the structure of mitochondria. So the, each mitochondria consists of outer and inner membrane. Outer membrane surround our mitochondria, but the inner membrane form a, a series of Folds, which called crystal. So this crystal is the place where we located the specific enzymes for ATP synthesis. And I pay your attention that all inner space of mitochondria is uh, filled with a semi-fluid substance, which called matrix. So the matrix contains a circular DNA, RNA, and ribosomes. So if they have DNA, RNA and ribosomes, so they able to produce the protein. That's why we call mitochondria semi-autonomic organelles. Also, we have a plastid. We have a three main part, uh, three main type of plastids. We have the chloroplast, chromoplast, and lacoplast. It depends on the pigment inside of our plastids. For example, chloroplast possess a green pigment chlorophyll. Chromoplast possess other pigment than uh, green. And lacoplast is a colorless um, plastid. Much attention to the training of future doctors and at our university is paid to practical training. At our department, students learn to make temporary specimen, uh, use microslide, determine blood groups, and many other interesting things. For example, on this photo, you may see a student from my group who looks under the microscope at different types of plastid. And here is the bottom of the slide. Slide, you may see a micro of um, of plastids. Let's discuss about structure of chloroplast. So chloroplast it's also double membranes organelles. So they have the outer and inner layer. So the inner space of um, our chloroplast called stroma and also contains a DNA. RNA and ribosomes. So the, um, they have DNA, RNA, ribosomes, so they're able to produce the own uh, protein. That's why it will be also semi-autonomic organelles. So we have two main semi-autonomous organelles. It's a uh, mitochondria and plastids. So the inner uh, membrane of chloroplasm form a set of flat disc-like sacs, which called Tilakoid. So this tilakoid contain chlorophyll. The stack of tilakoid is called grana grana. And granas connected by elongated fold, which calls lamella. Now let's speak about the uh, semi, about the uh, other organelles. And first of them, it will be the end plasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum is an extensive membrane system of interconnected tubules and flattened sacs or canals, and we call these canals like a cisterns. And these cisterns will connect it with plasma lemma or nuclear envelope. So we have two main types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. What's the main difference between them? So the main difference is that rough endoplasmic reticulum have on their surface ribosomes, whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum don't have any ribosomes on their uh, surface. So the function of endoplasmic reticulum are synthesis and transport of some molecules. For example, the function of rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum is a synthesis and transport of protein, whereas the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a synthesis and transport of lipid and carbohydrates. One more um, single membrane organelles, uh, 
it's a Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex. So Golgi apparatus is a stack of flat-handed, stylely carved membrane bound sacs, which calls also cistern, and also it's associated with them vesicles. So what about the trans function of uh, our Golgi apparatus. So most of synthesized molecules produced by endoplasmic reticulum migrate via vesicles to Golgi apparatus. So here in the Golgi apparatus, these molecules are modified, packed into the vesicles and transported to another part of the cell or outside of the cell by exocytosis. Also, one more specific function of Golgi apparatus is formation of lysosome and uh, peroxosomes. Also, the specific function of uh, Golgi apparatus includes the sperm acrosome formation during spermatogenesis and also synthesis and formation of the yolk in the egg. Here is a great scheme in which you may see the nucleus, also the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. For example, let's discuss about rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum possess ribosomes on their surface, so uh, it means that the function will be production of uh, protein. So after that, only primary structure of protein are synthesized and this primary structure migrate to Golgi apparatus. So in this Golgi apparatus, our primary structure modified to secondary tertiary structure, or they add some other uh, molecule like add the carbohydrates or add some lipids and etc. and packed into these vesicles and transport by them to specific part of the cell or outside from the cell. I would like to pay your attention to the next organelles, lysosomes. So lysosomes from uh, Latin lysis, it means splitting, and soma, it means body. So it's a specific vesicles which contain a different digestive enzymes, which called hydrolytic enzymes. So that's why the lysosomes are the primary organelles of intracellular digestion. So what about the function of lysosomes? So first function is a digestion of substances that enter the cell from the outside by the phagocytosis. Also, they, it's a digestion of damaged organelles by a specific process which is called autophagy. And also, it's a participation in a digestion of dead cells. And we have one more type of organelles, it's a peroxisomes. So it's also a small membrane vesicle which contain specific enzymes. It will be catalase and peroxidase enzymes. And the main function of this uh, organelles is a decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So it's a breaking uh, hydrogen peroxide to the uh, water and oxygen. And one more sim, uh, single membrane organs, organelles is a vacuole. So vacuole is a fully, uh, fully filled membrane sponge and animal may have a small vacuoles which perform a specific function like phagocytosis, uh, digestion or other function. But the mature plant cell possess a one large central vacuole. So the uh, fluid that fill this vacuum is called the cell sap. So the cell sap is a solution of inorganic and organic uh, components. So the main function of uh, vacuole is a uh, nutrient storage and osmoregulation. Osmoregulation means the regulation of water pressure in the cell. Also, I would like to give you some information about the non-membrane organelles. And first, it will be the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are spheroid bodies form of two unequal subunits. So we have a large subunit and a small subunit. So this subunit contains protein and R. RNA, ribosomal RNA. So I pay your attention that the main, the main function of ribosomes is protein biosynthesis. 
and the last organelle is the centrosome. So centrosome consists of two centrioles. So these centrioles is a, a short cylindrical structures that lie at the right end to one to another near to the nucleus. So each centriole composed of nine microtubules of tri triplets which lie in a ring. So what's the function of centrosome? The function of centrosome uh, help during the cell division. They form a spindle fibers that pull our chromosomes to the opposite uh, poles during the cell division. Dear students, I pay attention that most cells have similar structure, but they also have some differences. For example, let's compare the plant cell and animal cell. So the plant cell has a large central vacuole. They have a plastid, for example, chloroplast, and also they have a cell wall. At the other hand, the animal cell has no vacuole, cell wall, chloroplast, but they possess a centrosome with two centrioles. At the end of the lecture, I would like to give you more interactive pictures for better preparation for your exam, which you may find by scan this QR code. So thank you for your attention. Join to us and become a member of BSMU student family.